tend to walk into the most questions of people saying, why are you doing that? Part of being an innovator is a chance to say, hey mate, watch this and you'll know why. Let's begin things here, checking things out from Max's point of view. I personally will be looking at things through Razy's point of view because I just want to see what his start is looking like. Got himself access to a rocket and a rail already. And uh, let's really see what all the fuss is about, mate. Yeah, so far, uh, I mean, the spawns kind of let it be a bit quieter on the start here, but uh, I'm sure we'll have some explosive action starting up very, very soon. Razy's playing this one quiet, right? There he finally gets away his location, and Max are on the attack very quickly, using that grapple to get back Ooh. to position. It's some good LG work catch up for the first frag going to Maxter. And in doing so, pushed Razy up into the corner where there was no escape even if he wanted to. Now one frag in the lead so far as Razy takes even more damage. There's no armor to collect either. This is a scary be beginnings here. However, next item in play will be that heavy. But no doubt, I mean, this is Athena we're talking about. Max is going to be there first. You know Ooh. he is. Oh, nice shot. Oh, and that rocket. I cannot tell you how close that rocket was to hitting Razy right in the face. You know, I always love to Maxter when his rail is on, boy, does he put on a show and it looks like he wants to do that. In the first minute, we've seen him land a couple of real nice rails. In fact, he's 100% right now having thrown three out. All three of them pixel rails that he just nailed. Um, but Razy, as uh, definitely someone who is a, a seasoned veteran here, is uh, handling it well so far. Now trying to battle gear for this heavy, he is gonna have to get out of there. Actually doubles back after the trail. Another great rail coming out from Max. We're trying to land another one. Razy's gonna go on the attack this time. LG's doing a lot of damage. Can't quite finish him off though. Ooh. As he does, uh, just barely misses that rail and Razy almost got on the board. Ah! And that one was almost the exact same situation, Wheat. Got to give shout outs to that clutch, clutch grappling hook at the Ooh. first time. Nice frag, able to just save himself from that rail when he was really frames away from getting taken out for free, but instead able to stabilize and then some making it currently two to zero. Able to secure himself a heavy at the same time. Now, Razy hasn't really been able to be as assertive as he would normally want to. And I think in no small part that has come down to the surgical rail that Max has been hitting. Wait a minute, Razy on the back foot would have been dead had Max not run out of ammo there for the LG. Yeah, real impressive so far here from Maxter. Not only able to get that first frag, but then to keep the pressure on. And so far, uh, Razy just hasn't really been able to have a moment to breathe, right? He's like running these insane sprints. And then uh, at a moment, he would like to just stop for a moment. And Maxter is right there. Another great rail shooting uh, now 15 uh, shots. Eight of those have been hit. And Razy once again finds himself in the danger zone. Almost gets nailed with that one. Catch up, but manages to sneak away. And you're really, with especially with two champions like this, you're really seeing how small this map actually is and there it is frag number four unanswered here from maxter one would think that there's still time though and uh, i know that's obviously speaking the obvious that we have just short of seven minutes left but i'm just looking at the fact that it's two lights and i'm looking at how easily the two of these champions can cycle the map you know yes it's four to zero now but i can't help but feel we that there's a reality that razy stabilizes with one clean frag and that's where slash really comes alive uh, so I guess we'll keep a keen eye on it so far. That's why Razy isn't letting up at the moment. Maxter's damage has been absolutely phenomenal, as have his rails so far as he secures another one. Enough not to get a frag, sure, but enough to force away from the heavy so he can take it for himself. There's another one. That plasma trail, what plasma trail, mate? However, it has denied the chase. I mean, so impressive. Another jump into the main room, down to 20 points of health, and... Razy just cannot find an opportunity that is working for him. And you're you're right, right? We're four minutes in, but what Razy's looking for is that one frag that he can then explode. And Maxter's his pressure just seems to be too much here for Razy. Um, so you know, so far, you know, chat. I I I, I appreciate your uh, all your opinions on uh, on Razy's uh, slash here, but we haven't quite seen it go online yet. He needs that first frag in order to try to bring it around in his favor. Great rail coming out from Razy there on Maxers. He picks up that mega. Can he keep the pressure on? He's trying to. Oh, 
Oh, Ooh. that was close. Uh, that grapple, I think, saving him and almost killing him. Now Maxter down to 40 points of health. This is the opportunity. The chase is on, but the defensive rockets are too good. Razy finally pulling out his rail to finish the job. And now let's see uh, what Razy does. This is what I've had in the back of my mind all map long. What happens when Razy's the one that's controlling the situation? Now Maxter gets the spawn near rail, which is pretty much best case scenario, however. A return vertical rail, delicious stuff. And Max's defensive shots have been just what he needs to keep himself in. It's still rail level. That would have been a kill shot by far. Razy doesn't quite manage to land it, but likely going to be kind of aggressive now that heavy's in play. Happily picked up. And with this mega next, if Razy's able to get a frag here, he'll get the frag, he'll take the mega, and it will just continue to layer on the pain. But Maxter being nice and slippery. Look at this. He's trying on the low end. He does get hit with some... LG and it is kind of interesting because in order to fully utilize speed your opponent's going to know where you are so um, you know as we're seeing Razy wiggle around the corner here LG out heavy is picked up looking for a close range rail cannot land it Maxter though very very low needs to be careful here as Razy's going to back off try to get a little bit more of his stack and rearm with some LG cells now, oh, another great rail by Razy, but Maxter lands one as well. And now, as you mentioned, the lights go through this map and gobble everything up so quickly. There's not much wow. left, and that means this rail battle will determine the next frag, and it goes to Maxter, six to one, with about three and a half minutes left to go. Maxter just has this ability to land the most monumental rails, right? He's already got fantastic accuracy, sure, but whenever there's a rail that needs to be landed, he's gonna be the one to hit that mark. And most prominently on the defense, right? He knows that someone's gonna try and lay the pressure on, be aggressive, but all it would take is one rail to stop that push to make you safer, even for a split second. Maxter has this ability to just land that every single time. And it's been a huge pain in the ass for Razy, because every time Razy decides, right, I'm gonna make something happen now, he eats a rail at the same time as makes you have to second guess it. Like, kind of like that. If he eats another rail here, look, I mean, oh. ah, the rocket. Wow. Very nice rocket. And yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, there's been no clean frags coming out here. So there's not much conversion potential uh, on Razy's side of the table. Now, he's only needs four frags. Is that possible here on Deep Embrace? 100%. Here we go with the trail, getting some speed. Tries to chase after his opponent a little bit. Has been stealing away these lights as best as he can. Just doing a little bit of damage there with the rockets in order to grab that. And now this is his moment right here. A little bit better stack. Uh, he has the health advantage, has the armor advantage, but the chase is real. Even Slash cannot seem to catch up to Maxter. And you know you're doing the, your job right in that situation, but the opening rocket has other plans. Now, two minutes for three frags on this map with two lights. Yeah, mate, it's exactly as you said. So I feel like I'm, we're just not gonna say it's over until it's over, tries to escape, but no escape to be had. And in the closing two minutes, Wheat, is this where we start to see the strength of Slash shine through oh, when the chips are down? Oh, oh my God, it hurts to see. You know, I think there's your answer. Unfortunately, that's a hard amount of momentum to just gain back. Imagine you're going 100 miles an hour and you just hit a wall. It's going to take you a while before you get back to 100. And that is where Razy finds himself right now. Maxter will have no idea just how close he was, uh, I think, to, to potentially seeing a tie game here. But that was a huge, huge, huge misstep oh, there. Maxter with another frag. And that might end it right there, catch up. You know, I was actually looking at things through Max's point of view at that point. So when you went, oh, I'm like, well, what's going on? Look on my other feed and Razy's just in the pit. Yeah. That is so heartbreaking because, I mean, it's no exaggeration to say that that's more than likely cost Razy the map unless he can pull off a whole bunch of frags in 45 seconds for three. I mean, ugh. If he finds him every time, maybe, but Max is not going to let that happen. Yeah, I mean, even with respawn timer, this is going to be pretty tough. He need every second that is there. Nice direct rocket, but again, uh, he needs to get this one in the next two seconds, and uh, I don't know that it's going to happen. There it is. All right. Uh, oh, he's so right weak, though, respawn. Marcus. Wow. He is so weak. That's going to be a scary game to play. Razy knows he can't be patient anymore. He has to push. 
He has to push and then somehow find another. Yeah. But there's just no way. Oh, no. What a way to lose the map. We were just about to see what the fuss was about. Yeah. And, uh, if that doesn't prove that that kind of mistake happens to everyone, I don't know what does. I, I don't know exactly what happened. So here's a, a breakdown. I'm sure we're going to see it again, but sure we it got a looked replay. like Razy activated his trail right before. Whether that gave him just a little bit of momentum to where he mistimed it or misjudged that jump, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to get these replays. I'm really convinced that uh, you know Razy could have potentially tied it up given the momentum that he had right there. He had a better stack, he was about to grab that mega. Um, he had his opponent on the back foot. Um, so it, the other thing too is that I gotta be, you know, I, I gotta throw something out here, catch up. I have been somewhat critical of Maxter's Athena the past few weeks. It's not just been, it's not necessarily been amazing. It hasn't been terrible, but I've always felt like, oh, oh. there it was. Yeah, just by, I don't know. I don't know. It would be a little bit too soon, but Maxter's Athena looked phenomenal on that map. And, and uh, I think like that was Maxter's skill combined with really, really getting a s s download on, on that champ. And right, he 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 made uh, he made Razy. I feel like regret that pick a little bit. That did not go Razy's way. But what a way for Maxter to kick off this series. Yeah, I, I truthfully just don't think we had an opportunity to see why that pick was used. Um, I guess look, I think maybe there would be some people out there right now thinking, ah, well, you know, that just proves that it doesn't work. It's only one map, right? For it to get picked in this level of play, there must have been some reasoning behind it. And I think there was a, a brief, maybe not even a couple of minutes where we started to see it unfold. It just came down to Max to playing phenomenally well, hitting, well, every defensive shot he needed to essentially. And then of course, the uh, critical error uh, falling off the map just in front of the mega. That was the beginning of the comeback. You know, it's no need to dive into it too much. We all saw it. We all knew the consequences. So we're not going to get hung up on it. But if there's one thing Razy has always been able to do, it is to completely disregard every map that happened before and just focus on it one at a time. And as we now go into Blood Covenant, which is a drastically different map with drastically yeah. different champions, I don't imagine Razy's going to even be slightly thinking of that last map right as we jump into Blood Covenant, right? The job's not finished. We've got two more maps left to go. I know what I can do. We're just going to go and focus on the next 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, the the one thing that I would have, you know, I'm in Razy's shoe, and you're right. The, the mentality that you just mentioned, that's the mentality that Razy needs to have. Uh, I think Razy being on the receiving end, I mean, we saw Maxter's accuracy in that last game. And and that's really what let him play so well on this map versus Kilson just a week ago. Um, you know, Maxter looks to be on fire. I think this will be a different type of map, but I, Maxter or, or Razy needs to respect like Maxter's rail and his accuracy overall because it is looking monstrous this morning. We got a lot of information from the last 10 minutes that we saw, that's for sure. Yeah. But what it would mean, you know, if this map's able to go into the hands of Maxter, uh, a player that we've always known has just been very, very high level, um, isn't quite necessarily in like, you know, that sort of Kilsen level or the Rafa level just yet. However, so close to it that any amount of good results you can get in these closing weeks, you know, the world finals are only a few weeks away, really. Close. How well is Maxter going to play there if he's able to prove some insane results now? I mean, uh, certainly no underdog, but someone that could do very, very well if he keeps playing like this. Yeah, he's a player that I'm 100% going to be keeping an eye on uh, at, at LAN. You know, we all know that he's disciplined. He has the best posture in, in gaming. Uh, and, but, you know, sh putting all this together and showing us what he is made of here against some of the toughest opponents the last few weeks in QPL is exactly 
uh, what we want to see heading into the championship. So we have begun now on Blood Covenant. Razy on the visor. His opponent going to be on the Galena. So totem management is going to be important here for Razy. But both players definitely slowed it down. Just something we see a bit on Blood Covenant usually anyway. So not too, uh, not too surprised to see the difference between these two. Just taking a look. Everyone's got kind of the full arsenal of weapons that they want. So it's just going to come down to that first battle. It's always kind of scary fighting a visor. I know there's a couple of giveaways that might suggest that piercing sight has been used, but you know, if, if it's been a while since its shot would have made sense and you haven't seen each other for a fair while, then does he know where I am? Yep, there we go now. But I don't even know if that necessarily suggests that he used piercing sight there. I mean, that's a rather common rail angle to get hit by, so maybe the uncertainty will give Razy some kind of advantage. I guess it remains to be seen as we trade these items one apiece so far. Opening rail again. Razy hitting them back to back at this point. And now he just needs to get a good read on the opponent's escape. Oh. Surprises Maxter completely. And Maxter can't rocket jump out of there. That was a, just a phenomenal read from Razy. He chose the right path and uh, the adventure definitely went his way. Getting that first frag on the board. Yeah, Maxter surprised, tried to rocket jump out of there, but unfortunately it didn't really work out for him. Uh, so Razy on the board with the first one and looking very surgical, right? Uh, it seems to be uh, prioritizing the upper levels a bit, looking for those vertical rail shots. And now he might be able to scoop up both of the major items here. And that is going to make a very big monster traversing this map here. Catch up two minutes in, but Razy with that one frag, he looks like a completely different player compared to last game. It's kind of what we were talking about before. Razy is the kind of player that can disregard anything that happened. And this next map's good to go. That's where 101% of my focus will go into. And it's a, a rather champion-like mentality, something that you can't teach it, right? They're just experience alone. We'll show you how to get used to it. And now Razy choosing to go for the machine gun instead, but actually not amazing accuracy from either side. Uh, it's no wonder we really disengaged there. As the items will be up soon. Mega, the next one of which, Razy, in a better position. And he's just going to take this extra time, get himself some ammo, some hourglasses, some armor. And now we can set up for whatever might happen next. That's two lights shut down already. Razy's uh, kind of light armor management has been pretty great as well. He's been taking away most of those. And there he pops. Piercing Sight doesn't seem to be able to get a frag, but does do some pretty significant damage. And that will kind of force maxter uh into un probably unusual or uh you know rotation where he's searching for anything at this point scraps because razy has just taken everything away and you can tell finally maxter picks up a light and is a desperately uh, looking for even more stack because razy has always been breathing down his neck with so much more he is a beefy boy here on blood covenant and now still looking for Maxter, what is Maxter going to do to combat this? Well, that piercing sight alone means that there's no way Maxter can fight for that one. And it's no doubt Maxter heard him talking too. So uh, that was a free pickup if I've ever seen one. But again, answering back with the machine gun first. I think just trying to enforce the threat and force you away from the item doesn't necessarily want the fight, really. Just I just want you not to be anywhere near it now. Mega in hand. Maxter forced to retreat. The drop down, though, can't quite land the rail. That would have been critical to connect with. However, it doesn't feel like it's been a one frag game. I mean, there's been a fair amount of combat taking place, but nothing to secure. Both players happy to disengage. I think Maxter knows that if I can play my cards right, all I have to do is get one frag to even the odds. And Razy knows, hey, I mean, if I can keep a one frag lead this whole time and get one extra down the line, works better for me, too. Yeah. You know, the other thing that is so fascinating about Maxter's play right now is, is, is he just a defensive god in this map? He just is, you know, every time Razy has wanted to bump up the aggression a <laughs> little bit, like it's a rail, it's a, ra <laughs> uh, a rocket just perfectly placed. And unfortunately, you know, I think your brain says, go for it, go for it, go for it. Um, or maybe your heart does, but your brain says, I don't know, like Maxter's hitting some pretty decent defensive shots. Are you sure you want to do that? 
Um, and probably the reason why we only have one frag uh, for Razy, despite the fact that he's been so very much in control of this entire map. But he's not been in control enough to decide when it's time to go in for the kill. And I guess that can sometimes be the most important time to shut down the Maxter. He has been able to keep himself healthy and surviving, even though the majority of the control has been on Razy's side. Might change now, though, as that opening damage is fantastic. Removes all of the armor, but Razy's defensive plays. Back to back rail. Kind of doing what Maxter did to him, but yeah. I loved Razy's choice there. Maxter was not ready for him to be down near jump pad at all. That was very nicely done. And of course you, you compliment one on a skill and then the other's like, oh yeah, watch watch my defensive shots. Not took that back, personally. <laughs> yeah, Razy back in this one too, having to regain that stack. But Maxter like slowly trying to claw his way in there, right? Getting that heavy. Oh my Lord. Big, big LG damage coming out. The Rockets responding back, but Razy just catching Maxter once again by surprise and uh, really doing that initial damage with the LG, resulting in that second frag. And now Maxter's got to be feeling a little nervous, especially with those two back-to-back -back Rockets now trying to get another one. Can't fish it off. Maxter incredibly low, almost resulted in frag number three. I tell you what, though, the reason that frag took me by surprise so much and probably max to two is you're down near where heavy is. You hear the jump pad go. When's the last time you heard someone use the jump pad and that's the door they go through? It's no wonder Maxter wasn't looking that way. Who does that? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think both players kind of trying to rewrite how they should play this game here a little bit. Razy just looking to hold on to this two frag leads. It's one thing I love about Quake is that you don't need to win by 10, you just need to win by one. And Razy knows that. Uh, he continues to sort of assert his dominance uh, just from a control perspective. But as that clock ticks away, I think he can start to get a little bit more sneaky, a little bit more snaky about what he decides to do. He set up some really great traps uh, against Maxter here in this match already, but he's looking to try to close this one out with a flawless victory. Still on this rail bridge now, firing away. LG from Maxter comes out, but answered back by Razy. Maxter from the bottom manages to pull it off though. And everything that I just said out the window, this is totally winnable on either side. You could see it in Razy's face. The moment that last little burst of LG just completely failed to hit its mark, there was a, oh, come on! And then fresh into respawn. <laughs> Frustrating way to go, but you know what? Razy does have Max to kind of weak, even though there's only a rail in hand. Oh, hang on a minute. That's one way to start. Max to knows that Razy ain't going to have much equipment. I think, does he fear just the rail by itself? I guess time will tell. Now, just shy of... One and a half minutes left to go on this map. Razy, just to oh. remind everyone, Maxta is currently one map up here. If Razy falls short and goes 2-0, he is going to be, no doubt, incredibly disappointed. He wants to prevent that. He really does. Maxter falling down there from the middle to that lower light. Great rail from Razy on the top. Maxter still trying to push the advantage from the bottom and the time is ticking away catch up a minute and 10 seconds just under left to go great rail from maxter yet again he's not in the clear yet though grabs a light we will have heavy picked up by razy and how is he gonna push this this is gonna be super tough there's gonna be a piercing sight up for razy here in just a moment and what can maxter do I like that Razy popped it immediately. If he plays his cards right and manages those hourglasses, there is a chance he might be able to get himself one more. And when the chips are down and Maxter has to push in and be aggressive, that is where that last minute piercing sight will make it almost impossible for Maxter to win. Razy's gonna have that upper hand all the way through. Chooses to actually go in towards this heavy. And Maxter nowhere near it. I mean, Oh, that, unfortunately, I think that rocket jump was kind of all of the wind going out of his sails right there. That allowed Razy to get into position. He, he heard it, he reacted, and Razy takes the game by one. One to two to tie the series up. And that was, that was unfortunate. You know, that was, 
That was basically Max. I had not to say that Maxter was guaranteed to win if he would have hit that rocket jump. But I think, you know, with the time that was left, that was the opportunity he needed. Not quite falling into the pit like Deep Embrace, but <laughs> uh, comparable. I think if there's one thing that this entire series has proven is how brutal Quake is <laughs> as an eSport. Because you just play so well, right? It demands perfection. Yeah. I mean, look, let's be real, folks. That's why we love it. That's why, that's why this game just ticks all the boxes. But you'll be playing really well for 10 minutes and then one small mistake, boom, the whole map is gone. So the amount of focus you need to put forward. I love it. I mean, look, as a spectator of this Pro League, I love it. Uh, but if you're in the player's shoes, probably don't feel so good in those closing moments. But Razy was on the uh, receiving end of that in the first map, able to bring it back in map two, as now our third map's gonna be the decider. And uh, I mean, I don't even know what to suggest. I don't know what to make of this because it's been so close all the way through that we'll just let the remaining map play out and tell us how the journey unfolds itself. Yeah, I I don't know how to call this one either, right? Both players have kind of uh, put one foot forward. Definitely Maxter with the eight to five early on Deep Embrace. Wasn't quite the slash game from Razy we were looking for. Razy pulling it out again, as we mentioned during the game, you only got to win by one. So uh, he does manage to split the series, making game three a decider, which should make Chad happy because I saw them say like, hey, we've had kind of one sided matches, but here you go. Uh, why whoever's choosing these for the featured matches uh, has uh, some idea what's going on here. So it's going to be P uh, Strog, excuse me, for Maxer, uh, and Razy will be on the Ranger. We're moving on to Ruins. Now, both players have been hitting great rails. Uh, both players been setting up traps, uh, you know, playing absolutely five head mode for sure. So uh, this is a hard one to tell, right? I, I'm really excited to see what the predictions will, will be like here. And they do still favor Razy. Could mean a nice uh, payout there for all the Maxter fans, but I, I don't know how to call this one because I think it could absolutely go either way. We're just looking at two players that can have uh, absolutely through the roof rails. It's a rail heavy map anyway. Uh, the battle of two mediums. Also looking at how they're going to probably approach things here. The, the range is going to have so much more of that, I guess, setup potential. Being able to uh, spring a trap, a little bit of bonus mobility. There's a lot of layers that you can bring forward where Ranger in the hands of someone like Razy can be very, very scary. Especially with kind of how he's been playing in the other two maps. I know map one was a bit of a disaster. Um, the second map, he was in charge more than likely because he just had access to that piercing sight that he was managing so well. Now Razy gets to be a little bit more brutal, I suppose. And his Max are going to be able to get a good start here to maybe start turning the tide somewhat. This will be the decider. I mean, it's one map apiece. This is the good stuff. Yeah, I sent Peeker in there at the beginning on a little suicide mission to get some information, and he got exactly what he wanted. Uh, so Maxter starting this one off. But I, I have to agree with you, catch up on what you said. I, I do like uh, Ranger and Razy on this. Right? It, it allows him to get aggressive and to throw out some burst damage or to have an escape as well. Um, I mean, Peeker can be effective more as information gathering and, and sometimes as a kind of finisher, uh, but we'll have to see first rail of the game goes to Max or second rail as well. Razy going to throw out his orb on a fake though, and that's going to allow Peeker to come in, try to do some damage. Razy weaseling his way out of that one. I'm not sure. Oh my God. He what? actually falls back through, gets hit with the rail. Now looking for the follow-up and Maxter can't find it as Razy slips away. And not only does Razy slip away, but he steals the heavy. So if he just picks up a little bit of health here, it's going to be like nothing ever happened. Does manage to get a rail through the teleporter. Razy sticking around, actually looking to get some more damage of his own, but he's playing such a scary game. I am clenching very hard here. However, 10 seconds left to go on that heavy. One that Razy, ugh, without a rocket launcher, that is going to be kind of hard to fight for. But it looks like the way things are going, maybe they're just going to trade one for one. As Maxter near the Mega, probably going to take that one as Razy takes heavy. And we swap item for item again. I cannot, I cannot believe that Razy is still alive. I cannot believe this is still a zero to zero map. 
Yeah, in a lot of cases where players would have said, hey, I'm out of here, peace. Uh, Razy stuck around and held his ground. And you mentioned earlier about how Razy tends to kind of dismiss what happened in previous maps and focus on what's happening now. And I think that kind of play exactly, right? He's not playing scared. He's still confident in his own skill sets. And I think that's what we're seeing. So Mega is back up. Razy trying to hit some rails. And Razy definitely trying to play a more long mid-range game right now as great rails from Max are on the retreat. Yeah, the heavy was picked up by Razy. Another great rail. Maxter, where have you been keeping all of these? Orb up to the top level. And Peek are going to try to come back out. But Razy just using all the bags of tricks to just try to not give Maxter any sort of opportunities at all. Is this just the Quake edition of Ranger? Man too angry to die? <laughs> Maybe. He's fed up of it, man. He's been stuck there for so long. I'm out. See you later. God, I wish I had a steak. Anyway, three minutes already gone down and somehow the map remains to be zero to anything else. I mean, I'm, if you're in Max's situation now, that concentration just needs to keep itself all the way through. You know, you've been in a position where you just you just can't finish someone off and you just get really frustrated by it. You're like, come on, how, how weak was he? But one thing that has kind of existed here is that Razy, by surviving the way he has, he has been on the back foot for the entire three minutes. It has allowed Maxa to get all the items, all the weapons. He's been incredibly healthy, with the exception of that rail that Razy just landed here. But you can see why Razy's continuing to play really careful. You know, he believes in his ability to escape with his life and survive. But at the same time, he actually has only used a couple of orbs this entire map. There's another one. Chooses to fake out, but Maxter will not take the bait. However, Razy does take this mega away, looking for the opening rail. Man, we, this has just been such a bizarre map to me. But Razy, I mean, there's, there's a really clear, confident game plan here. I mean, it's pretty wild to think that through the course of this map, we've seen 12 rails hit between the two players, but it's still zero to zero, um, right? Like typically you're going to have that many rails and there's going to be at least a frag up on the board, but it, it goes to show the type of game that these two are playing, right? We've not really had a close quarter battle at all, even in the situations where uh, it looked like it was going to open in such a way that it, it did not happen at all. Orb comes out. All the, the heavy, though, stolen away by Maxers. He was there for it. And first frag, a big risk for Razy. I kind of like that he took it, but unfortunately, it did not work out for him at all. Catch up. Uh, he got hit with that initial rocket moving in, and that was kind of the downfall, resulting in the first frag for Maxer. However, Maxter is still quite weak. Thankfully, the existence of that rail alone means that Razy can't push forward. He cannot take that risk. And actually, even being here near heavy, taking a risk, Maxter flying around the backside? I mean, hello. I'm not used to seeing people come around that way. Yeah. Maxter. It's got to uh -oh. be. Ooh. That rail go through both of them? I don't even see there. Light picked up and Maxter now. It kind of in the same boat that Razy was in earlier, much less or mu a much smaller stack. We're five minutes in though. There is still so much time, but both players kind of committing to this mid long range uh, sort of warfare. And, you know, Maxter, I think making a lot of great decisions, his rail accuracy much better than what Razy's put up on the board. But Razy, nine heavies, four megas, uh, Maxter, two heavy, seven megas, and then 11 lights for Maxter. So kind of incredible how these two have split the map. Another thorough understanding of the situation. No reason to be too aggressive, no reason to push. We've got four minutes left to go with only one frag, so it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier on. Very much shades of Blood Covenant. The aggressive rocket jump from Razy doesn't really result in any damage, and Maxter is he even going to use that teleporter? Doesn't even seem slightly interested. I think he wants to make sure it's safe first. Yeah, out of the teleporter, immediately into a rail, drops out Peeker as he falls to the lower level. Maxter still making Razy guess what is going on. Heavy's up as Razy came up the stairs. Maxter fired a shot, but that one did not hit. And now Mega is going to be 
in the sights of both of these players now is Maxter going to maybe try to assault from the other side. The opponent's already there. No opportunity to do so. He's just got to hold on to this one frag, but man, that could be nerve wracking catch up. It's the risk attached to playing that kind of one frag game. I know not everyone is a huge fan of the hyper defensive plays. Sometimes people just want to see, you know, uh, guns blazing, I guess. But with this kind of game plan that is so defensive and so careful, yes, it can result in a one frag game, but there's such risk attached to it. Now there's the aggressive push from Razy. The defensive peeker, though, actually means that maybe Maxa can still secure this frag, and that would be unbelievable. Razy decides, you know what? Nah, 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 I'm not even going to risk that. I'm going to grab that Mega and I'm going to get out of here. That rail. Good oh Lord. Gosh, the rail and then the LG as he came down. Just that perfect bead. Uh, uh, just well done by both players there. Um, I mean, from a defensive perspective, this game's been really, really incredible. Uh, Maxter, though, still in the lead. And here's the two-minute warning. If this ends up being a 1-0 game for Maxter, I would not only be shocked, but hold on, Orb coming out, fight here at the heavy, Maxter very, very low, and Maxter suicides, making it a 0-0 game raise. He's so low, he's got to rearm and re-health up. We've got Peeker coming back up. It can't get the job done, but oh, that is too bad. And then the LG can raise he. Oh my, oh my God, catch him, I can't even believe it. Oh, even these rails. The amount either connection will make. Razy hit on the way. And actually, that heavy Maxter, I mean, you can clearly, he didn't want to risk it. No. There's, there's going to have to be such care here. We're just about to hit that one minute warning. This could very well be a one frag game, the way things have currently gone. Would not be surprised. But if there's a risk to be taken, you've got to be damn sure that it's a risk worth taking. Gets oh. the free rail. Maxter oh does the classic Strog maneuver. Get the peeker out, use the rail, and during the downtime, hit one of your own. But the flyby wow. from Razy! If he missed that shot, absolutely Maxter would have gone in. I'm sure of it. But the light, it's too risky. Wait, there is so much risk. Maxter there... thought about going through that teleporter and went, nah, you know what? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Maxter with that long range rocket, it does do a little bit of damage, but unfortunately also gives away his position as well. 30 seconds left to go, and Razy is a beast right now. Full stack, Maxter completely missing any armor. Oh no, no, he just didn't see it coming at all, and Razy. He reverses everything. The tables have turned. There's 10 seconds left to go. Peeker coming out. A lot of damage, but not enough. The rockets go in. Maxter's low, but he's going to go for it anyway. He's got balls of steel. He's going to try to grab it, and he cannot do it. It's Razy who wins it. Zero to one. And I don't know that I've seen that low scoring of a series in quite some time. Razy taking it two to one. The series overall. Maxter was so close to actually taking Razy out, but the suicide on the lower levels near the heavy ended that one unbelievable. There were so many last minute clutch rails that needed to be landed to mm -hmm. keep Razy in it. Um, and, you know, even down to that last one near uh, light armor, super shotgun, that, that one little tiny rail, there was, a, there was a smidgen of an angle and he was able to somehow find it. We'll bring back Lethal. Uh, and I tell you what, of all the ways I thought this series could have gone down, I don't think that's how I imagined it would have ended. That was a test of absolute, like, patience and composure. And Razy able to, uh, I think, match himself um, and, and be able to to get that last minute one up, but lethal, mate. What a close series it was, mate. It was absolute madness. Like between these two, who on earth would have expected like these kind of score lines on the last two maps? It was just just absolutely ridiculous. But it just shows you don't need a high score game to be with a real treat, really, do you? Like you know, every single moment we were. Categorize, so, uh, categorizing exactly how things were going to shape up towards the later stages. At one point, Razy, you only had like 800 damage around the, the eight minute mark. And I was thinking to myself, when are you going to lay down the law at some point? And 
both players in the last two maps, especially that map in particular, like they were completely allergic to each other, just wanted to keep well away from each other on so many different circumstances. But yeah, it was just high, high in-depth intellectual plays and neither player was really giving each other much room in terms of like errors or mistakes or really mm. much openings, was it? So no, incredible stuff and you know, Razy does manage to topple him in the end. It, mate, it could have gone so many different ways. It was just, it was just ridiculous. I'd say, uh, Wheat, congratulations for Razy for being able to pull this one through. Um, it was, wow. I mean, we kind of look at all three of those maps and a lot happened to both players, actually. A, a, a mixture of huge successes, gigantic disasters. I mean, looking at that first map where Razy straight up fell off the map. Um, and that was what, you know, cost him the, the deep embrace where we're all like, oh my lord, what? You're not used to seeing that happen to Razy. You're not used to seeing that happen to anyone in Pro League. Yeah, shake the it out, map. you know. Yeah, like that's it. let that stuff happen now, so that it doesn't happen during the championship. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I think everyone would rather it happen now than when we're we're playing at the finals, right? Because if yeah. that's yeah. if that's how you go out when the chips are down, then uh, I, I don't want to be the first person that speaks to them after the match. They probably have some not so nice words for you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we are going to go for a quick break, and when we return, C and Z versus Kilson will be going head to head in our final featured matchup of the day. This is the Quake Pro League. Thanks for watching so far. One left to go. See you soon.